Hello, Gaz Williams here for Sonic Lab, typecast into reviewing small little gadgety toy things, but hey, that's what I love. Uh, but today's review is looking at the new addition to Korg's Little Bits range, which came out a short while ago, which was like a little synth kit. Um, and Nick has done a review on Sonic State, so I recommend you watch that to sort of get up to speed with it. But what the new modules do is they bring a way of interfacing these existing modules to kind of connect with your existing studio kit. Now, for users of the little bits, you might have noticed that the oscillators and the filters, they sound good. They sound a lot better than you'd maybe expect. They, they look like toys, but they sound meaty and blah. And for the past few weeks, I've had the little bits kit on my dining room table. Various friends have come around have absolutely loved them playing with them and just getting all sorts of cool sounds out of there. So I think that they are, there's more to them than just simple little toys. They are actually proper analog synth devices really. But the problem's been that if you wanted to use them with your other equipment, with a computer or with a sequencers or MIDI gear, then the, you've been pretty limited. Now, so the Synth Pro kit from Korg and Little Bits in the collaboration aims to kind of fix that with three modules which all offer different ways of connectivity. Our first module here is the MIDI module and there's a little USB there's a little USB micro USB port on there and there's also a little jack which goes to a breakout cable uh, but what you'll notice is that there's a tiny little switch on here which toggles this unit from a MIDI in to a MIDI out so wherever you place that within your chain its functionality will be determined by that. Our next module here is our little audio USB module. This is a class compliant device so you can use it with your iPads and various things and like the MIDI module there's a little switch which dictates whether this is an audio in or an audio out module. And our third module is the CV module which there's a CV in and a CV out and a little switch to toggle between volts per octave or hertz per volt. And uh, these are all available individually at $35 for the CV module and for the audio USB module and $40 for the MIDI module. There's also a kit which you can get which is uh, two CV modules, the MIDI module and the USB module plus two mounting boards for $140. So not cheap but they do aim to give, as it calls itself, a pro way of connecting these devices to your existing kit. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to now see how we can use these modules together with say, well our first thing is we'll use it with an iPad and we'll see how they can interact the little bits with an iPad. So here we have got the app Musics running on the iPad and the USB coming out through the camera connection kit is going into the little bits MIDI module and I've got it set to MIDI in. So I'm going to now snap together some of these little bits. I'm going to put an oscillator followed by a cutoff filter and then into a delay. Why not? I will put the output there. Now I'm just going to check on my iPad settings uh, to make sure, yes it's seeing it, little bits Korg MIDI out. Brilliant. So now I can play notes from the iPad coming out of the we can see that our iPad is acting as a great control surface. Now if I swap that app out and put in a sequencer instead. So here we've got Genome, the MIDI sequencer running on the iPad. Excellent app. Uh, I'm going to go into it and uh, if I set the set the pattern play in, I can add notes in. Uh, add. So lots of fun and of course if we had a more complicated setup of the little bits with two oscillators and some of the other little bit modules in there it could be a lot more you know exciting uh, but it seems to work pretty well. Uh, 
we have had some trapped notes, uh, which ne necessitates unplugging things and reconnecting it. There doesn't appear to be some way of killing like a MIDI panic uh, and sending a MIDI panic doesn't seem to cure that either. So that's something to maybe watch out for. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch it over from a MIDI in to a MIDI out. And we're gonna see what happens if we send MIDI from the little bits to the iPad. So here we've got Korg's rather nifty module running. This has got the uh, the expansion with ivory. So a very nice grand piano indeed. Uh, we've got this now connected to a very, very simple setup with uh, just simply a micro sequencer going to the MIDI module. So this really is about as simple a system as possible. But if we set this off, there's a little switch on the micro sequencer which will set the clock going. So, four step sequence. You get these nice little weird. <laughs> now what happens if we put some modules after it? Oscillator. What would happen if I put the oscillator after the sequencer? Whoa! <laughs> so what's going to happen now? I'm going to put in the delay and see what that does. And here lies the thing. The little bits is all about experimentation. And I'm not quite sure why this is doing it, but it's certainly a lot of fun. So as I play with the controls of the delay... <laughs> is it safe? Ooh! Wow! <laughs> really creepy! <laughs> okay, <laughs> so you can see there's lots of unexpected fun to be had and I'm sure there's probably all sorts of strange other ways that you could manipulate the MIDI data. So, an unexpected little surprise there. Okay, so in this setup we've got the USB module that's set to audio out. So that's coming into the iPad now as a digital audio signal. Now when I set this sequence off, we are monitoring it just out of its own little built-in speaker. So we'll get a little sequence on the go. Okay, so I'll get something on the go. I can start sampling it into Sampler, my favorite iPad app of all time. Bit of nonsense. Okay, that'll do. Let's knock that off. Okay, so now uh, switching back to the iPad. So we can have some fun. Or if I just play the sequence. Uh... So it's cool, we can get our audio in digitally from the little bit synths. So let's go the other way around. Let's send audio digitally into the little bits, see what we can do with that. So here we've got the USB module at the beginning of the chain and we've switched it over so it's now on audio in. So it's receiving audio that's coming from the iPad. I'm running the Korg IMS20 on here, which is kind of appropriate because the filter is supposedly derived from the IMS20. So I've got it running through the filter and through the delay. So I've got a little sequence here, so I'll set that off. Filter, give it some res. We 
can compare that just out of interest, out of the, the filter on here. Some similarities. A little bit different. Okay, let's put it through some delay. It's quite dirty, but it's quite pleasing. Now we've looked at audio in, audio out, MIDI in and out. This leaves us to look at the CV in and out functionality. So here we've got a very simple setup. We've got the CV module at the beginning of the chain going into an oscillator and then into a filter and then into the output module. And we've got it coming into the CV in. And what we're using here is we're using the Moog Moog Theremini, which has got a CV out. And what that will allow us to do is, it'll allow us to use the theremin to act as a controller for the oscillator. So if I turn the filter up now, we're using the, the square wave. And you can hear it's quite a, it's quite a fat thing. Let's put the pitch up a little bit. Okay, so that's using CV in. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in some more pieces of kit to utilize both the CV in and the CV out. Let's see what we can get up to. Okay. So what we got going on here is quite interesting because we're using the CV modules and the CV modules have got a CV in and a CV out and we're utilizing both in this case. So what's going on at the moment, we've got a sequencer going into an oscillator and then into a filter going into the output. Now the filter in this case, the little bits filter, has this CV module plugged in to the side into the frequency in. So essentially, we're sending a signal from the microbrute, we're actually sending an LFO from the microbrute that's modulating the cutoff via the LFO controls on the microbrute. Now there isn't an LFO in, in the original um, little bits Korg kit. But the good news is there is an LFO module in development. It's under review at the moment, so fingers crossed that will be out soon. But uh, in the interim, it's, it's nice with this kit that we can use other devices like the Microbrute to create an LFO. Okay, so we've got that going on, but the sequencer and the trigger out of the sequencer is going into our other CV module, and from the CV out, it's coming into the gate input of the microbrute. So therefore, the, the, the pulse of the sequencer is affecting the microbrute. So the microbrute will play notes that's governed by the sequencer. So if we start the sequence again, if I just take the, take the little bits out, I adjust the speed, of the sequencer. We can hear how that's affecting. Let's bring this fella back up now. I'll take the volume of the microbrute out. We've got, a, we've got a triangle wave modulating the cutoff. Put a square wave or the triangle. So we can hear that. We can hear how the LFO is affecting the little bits via the 
CV in. So you can see that working well, but if we were to use uh, multiple oscillators of little bits, uh, then the scaling of the, the tuning is very tricky to set up, so it's quite hard to do things in tune. That's using multiple oscillators. Whereas it might be easy to dismiss the little bits as, you know, nothing more than a toy. Uh, my friends have, who've been coming around and playing around with them are just thrilled about it. And in, in fact, uh, a friend of mine, she said that it's really helped her understand how analog synthesis works. So, you know, little bits are ostensibly an educational tool and this is, an, this is part of that. But what these new modules do is they do allow you to bridge that gap into, you know, from like a toy educational purpose into uh, a more practical, usable solution. Um, if you were to collect up lots of the little bits modules, then certainly it would make a lot of sense to allow them to talk to your other bits of equipment. And, and for that, I think it's really good. You know, there are some drawbacks of using them, um, namely that they can be slippy. But what we've got here on our surfaces, this is like one of these kind of rubber, uh, rubbery things. You get them to, to line kitchen drawers with, and we've just sort of gaffer taped it to our surface here. And what I find is that actually, they don't slip around at all on that. So if you were to get the little bits on our flummoxed somewhat with with a bit of slippy slidey kind of oscillator control uh, maybe invest from your local hardware store in some of this rubber matting it certainly works for us so that just about ends our review of the Korg little bits synth pro kit and yeah I think great you know certainly brings the world of little bits into our other studio world and for that that's a good thing i think it's a little on the pricey side uh, as are all the modules if you were to buy them separately but hmm, maybe that's just the way it is but they certainly do add a lot of value to your existing little bit setup i'm gaz williams bye for now